Hey everyone. All right, I'm gonna do another drawing. This is actually, I'm recording the audio for this uh, quite a while after I did this drawing, but it's, uh, I find it's easier to talk about these drawings in a kind of retrospect or see myself doing them and talk about them rather than, I don't think I could actually um, talk about them while I was doing them. I think it would change the process. Oh, I watched this before. This, this is kind of me hilariously trying to rip a sheet of paper out of a book. It's like, um, it was uh, it was not cooperating with me. Um, I thought this is interesting kind of how I'm starting here. I'm, I'm starting, uh, instead of making uh, marks or, or painting directly in the book, um, this, this had a, I had a bit of forethought on, on this, which I didn't, I don't necessarily always do, but um, my thought here was, I, I got this book of a particular kind of density of graph paper, because I, I liked, I like having grids on here, and I wanted a certain kind of um, level of graph paper. I'd still like to find, um, I always remember those kind of engineering notebooks, they would always have that kind of hard cover. Uh, I think I had one in uh, physics class, which I almost failed in high school. They had that sort of, uh, they were for, um, you know, n notation of particular, uh, oh, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm talking about in terms of physics, so I shouldn't even start, but for graphing, basically, that they had a very fine grid that was sort of in, in a, a light green. I'd still like to find one of those, uh, hopefully cheap. I did look online and they were just too expensive. Anyway, I got that uh, little pack of, of kind of a nice enough um, density graph paper with the idea that I wanted to uh, use it as um, a collage paper. Um, and I knew in this case that I wanted to put um, that particular orange uh, on top of it, uh, roughly, and then have that as a as kind of a, a working, um, you know, a starting point for the collage papers. Uh, you can see here, um, I've talked about it a couple times now, I'm, I'm using a fairly <laughs> common for me color palette, the, these um, these kind of, uh, not quite burnt orange, but it isn't a, um, it's a, it is a, an orange that has a little bit of um, warm, extra warmth in it, or, or a little bit of uh, deepness to it. I quite like that sort of thing with this again, also kind of a warm pink. Uh, I think I mentioned in another video that like this, this is almost a coral color, but um, but not quite. <laughs> Actually, I guess I used two different pinks there just to, so I had the, the, the orange, which is fairly um, thin and goes on uh, in a much more transparent way than some of the other um, acrylics from that the same company. Um, I haven't really talked about brands or anything like that much. I, I tend to buy um, those Amsterdam acrylic paints. They're not uh, high, high quality, but they're also not low quality. Uh, I've exper experimented a little bit buying like, you know, dollar store acrylic paints and that sort of thing. And they have their purpose, but they're very, very thin and not very well pigmented. Whereas these Amsterdam ones are... Uh, you get a decent amount for not that much money, and, and they're actually pretty nicely pigmented, and um, and they apply really nicely. Um, they are, some of them are a little bit plasticky feeling still, which is the, um, when you're doing, working with acrylics, that, that can be part of the issue. I think I mentioned that in the last video. Um, I was digging around below the, the desk surface there. There's, I have a little bin that has a few other bits and pieces in it. And uh, I can't, I, I made this little rough rectangle template for another project uh, a while back. Um, and I just grabbed it from underneath there, not really with any intent, but I thought, oh, kind of interesting to have um, this rectangular form that I can repeat, but it isn't a pure, like, straight-sided square or straight-sided rectangle. It's like more of a weird rhomboid kind of thing. Um, I liked that as a starting place just to get some uh, some structure down. Uh, you can see, as I've talked about in prior videos, 
I'm <laughs> I'm being a, a little bit slapdash in terms of like working wet on wet. I've got this that piece of cardboard sitting on some pretty uh, wet paint right now. Um, but uh, spoiler alert, it works out fine. I, I don't. Uh, I have in the past done that and ended up like either ripping the paper or just pulling up large amounts of uh, what was underneath. So um, I'm occasionally a little bit silly in terms of uh, not waiting for things to dry enough. Um, there is there is a point to not waiting for things to dry entirely because then it means you get a bit of workability, you get a bit of um, the ability to because once an acrylic dries, you can reactivate it a little bit with water, but it never really uh, does that. I'm putting down a little bit of um, one of my favorite uh, very, very intense uh, gouache paints. It's got it's just like a, a neon, neon orange um, that I think I may have used in the, in the last thing. But it, actually, no, this one's actually, um, I think they qualify this one as a red um, but it but it reads as a as like a, a deep but also um, very very um, kind of the phone camera here even has a bit of trouble with it it's that level of color like I, I find that a lot of the um, at least kind of uh, cameras on phones as as good as they are these days have trouble with certain colors like rendering certain colors and these colors have a bit of a, a glow. I guess it's actually kind of that they have a, a weird reflective um, quality to them that like they're they're very matte and yet they they kind of reflect back. I'm sure if I if I had a UV light there they would be like intensely glowing. Um, anyway, I I tend not to do. You see, I I did a thing where there where I kind of somewhat you know, somewhat more carefully uh, made, use that same template to to make a, a colored square with paint at the top. Um, and then I have a tendency, if I've got a palette knife or something like that, if it still has a bunch of paint on it, sometimes I'll wipe it off. But honestly, I have a, a habit of just like wanting to use that somewhere on the same page. So that's why I did that sort of swipe of that same mix of orange and and uh, that was sort of I put down a pink and then I put down the orange and they sort of blended together uh, it uh, it that sort of de-intensifies that orange but it, it makes for a nice kind of uh, uh, organic feeling bit of color um, this is another like I say <laughs> oranges pinks, yellows. I think that's like a little, that's again, same. It's like a little whole bean gouache. I think that's like a Naples yellow. I quite like Naples yellow because it's, uh, um, again, another, it isn't a, it isn't a, it's a warm kind of yellow, but it still has a lot of pigment. Um, and it, but it's, but it's brighter. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't, I don't pay, uh, I guess the other thing I don't think I've ever mentioned is I don't, I almost always just use, um, color straight from the tube. Um, I'm not, you know, I have in the past, I, I can color mix to some degree, but I, I probably, I'm not, uh, practiced at it, but I, I favor, wanting to use color straight out of a tube mostly because it's more like just drawing straight with media like choosing a, a pencil of a certain color choosing a marker of a certain color and then um, any mixing that happens is mixing that is um, part of the process part of the drawing process I guess the mixing happens live on the on the surface of the, of the paper as opposed to me um, going off to the side and mixing a particular color. So um, I'm sure to someone that's uh, like, there's a laziness in that, but I don't really care about that so much. Um, it's To me, it's just um, picking the picking certain colors uh, initially and, and then and then working within those boundaries.
like I say, like you don't you, you don't tend to. I guess if you're working with watercolor pencil crowns, for instance, you might um, mix those ahead of time. But even those, you would probably mix on the page more than, or um, or like draw and then mix with water afterwards. But anyway, mixing. So um, you can see that what I've what I did here was like I I wanted to use that grid paper, graph paper. Um, and I cut it in a way so that I ended up with a similar, um, like I wasn't trying to make square forms with the orange that I um, put onto that um, graph paper. I was uh, I was just putting on fairly roughly, but I've ended up with at least that one sort of square edge, and so I picked that one first to sort of mirror the the square that I made with the template. And now I'm, I've got another one here that is kind of mirroring the, where I just did the square outline. Um, I don't know. I, I Sometimes I, I, when I'm doing these drawings, it's very, there's not a lot of attention to like uh, layout or form or, or balance or anything like that. I guess there's, it's always there maybe uh, instinctually in some way. Um, but sometimes I really like to, uh, start at least with some shapes that, that form a balanced kind of structure. It's, it's rough and it's not like strictly balanced. Cause like I say, this, these squares are not purely square and they're also not, I'm not positioning them with any, they're just kind of eyeballed where I'm putting them, but, um, Anyway, that's kind of what I'm going here, going for here. Um, I chose to use a uh, glue stick in this case to put this down, even though I'm working like the paint underneath was still a little bit wet, mainly because in this case, I didn't want um, too much transfer of other paints onto the that graph paper. Um, I, I just... <laughs> Put my hand under there because I thought for a second that I'd poked through the paper, which which happens occasionally with this. Um, if I I haven't so far in in this video, in case you haven't watched any of these other videos, this is a a, a ninety or so year old uh, like counting ledger that I'm that I'm drawing in, and so the paper uh, of this book is quite. Uh, you can see it's quite yellow. It's quite um, it's fairly thin pages, and they're fairly brittle now, just just from age and and. Uh, you know, the paper uh, probably has fairly high acid content because it wasn't meant to be quality, quality paper. I mean, maybe it was okay paper at the time, but like I say, it's it's a 90-year-old book and it wasn't meant for, um, you know, it was meant for, for work and probably for to keep a record for a certain amount of time, but I doubt they expected that this book would be kicking around 90-plus uh, years later and Certainly no one would have thought it was going to be used for this uh, <laughs> strange abstract artwork. But um, anyway, so that's, that's uh, if you're just watching this video for the, and you haven't watched any of the other ones, the, this is, I, I just call this the ledger for short, because it is this accounting ledger, and uh, I, I'm working my way through it, and I'm, I've, I've almost finished um doing a, you know, a drawing per, per page after it's taken me a few years to, to get through it, just sort of picking away, doing, sometimes doing a few drawings in rapid succession, sometimes putting the book away for, for quite some time. All right, so here I am, uh, I've got my little bin of various scrap papers off to the side there, and so I'm looking for possible things that I might want to add to this. Um, sometimes I get to the point of like, uh, choosing things, cutting them to a shape, and then I still actually don't end up putting them in. Um, the, what I'm working on the little piece of paper, that's from some, uh, again, probably around a 90 year old piece of paper, um, or so, uh, it's from the... 30s or 40s it's a kid's school book it's their like basically it's like their vocabulary homework so it's a list just a list of words um and so there's 
I often find that interesting. One, because you get a little bit of the, the kind of shape and flow of uh, kind of a loose cursive. It's like the, it's a fairly young kid, and so their cursive is not perfected, and, and they've got kind of a loopy style. Um, but then you also get this list of words, and, and then it, that, that can become... And the, they're voc- vocabulary words, so they don't necessarily have... What they have in common usually is... Uh, first letters or types of words, that sort of thing, but they don't, um, they're not meant to be read together necessarily. Um, in the end here, I'm not sure, uh, you know, I'm trying to see if that fits in because I've cut it to, a, again, a, a shape, a uh, rectangular shape that kind of matches the, um, the other kind of square shapes, at least in height. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if I want to include it. And so I'm Digging through again, you can see that that uh, the the paper scraps here are a bit of everything. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to uh, what I'm looking at there, that's um, some of my like self made kind of collage paper, like a um, paper that I've spray painted stuff on with the intention of cutting it up um, and using it in collage, um, and uh, yeah. Looks like I kind of, um, there was something in this case just about that scrap, kind of the, it almost had like a, uh, uh, I guess it's like a, what's the, I was going to say like a, a reverse uh, eclipse, but the reverse of eclipse of an eclipse is just like the regular, the regular sun, I suppose. So that doesn't really make sense. I guess it was like that, uh, because I've, I previously cut a circle out of that orange circle that I had spray painted on there, there's that um, kind of halo or kind of corona effect going on there. Um, I've said again in, in other videos that sometimes those um, circular forms especially feel celestial or planetary or something like that, um, even though that's, I, I'm not, necessarily intending that but it, it, I guess if I'm thinking that then there's some level of, of intent um, and now's, now's a point where I often so I've got to kind of pencil in hand and um, there's a point I get to oh maybe not pencil <laughs> oh, okay I'm just I think I, I'm pausing a little bit here because I'm uh, I want to give this a bit of time to dry and then also making a different choice. Uh, I was going to do just regular pencil. That's like a, a, a water soluble graphite pencil, but instead I went for one of these. Um, these are I'm not, I'm certainly not sponsored, even though I, I have the, the brand on that kind of showing, but I, I really like, um, especially the blacks, uh, these Stabilo, um, it's like an all right or right all. I forget. I forget what their, what their naming is. But it's um, it's a fairly uh, the the all right or, or right all whatever it is. It means that you know it, it'll it'll go on to quite a few different surfaces, um, but but it also doesn't. Uh, it's also water soluble. So um, it's interesting. It's a very black black like quite um, dense. But then it has some play to it like I can get it wet and smudge it if I want to um so I go back to these pencils quite a bit they're um und- kind of unduly expensive like each of those pencils is over two dollars it's kind of dumb um but uh they do something that a lot of um like the only other place you can that I feel like gets this kind of black black is more like a grease pencil but this has the benefit of not being greasy like that and not not being as waxy and not acting like a, a resist it, it stays kind of matte but it's also strong black um anyway so uh dots uh, as i've mentioned in other things dots are a, a common uh thread uh, throughout the the work i've been doing since like well, really for, let's see, how many, for like almost the last, last like seven years or so or something, I've been doing, um, 
kind of abstract uh, work of various sorts. I, I, I go back and forth occasionally. I think I've mentioned before, occasionally I'll, I'll work representationally. Maybe one of these videos I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just do a, a, a drawing in, in that way. I tend to then draw kind of random people um, that, that I kind of swing <laughs> instead of like, instead of any, any abstraction at all, I swing towards, um, drawings of people that I just make up that, uh, that aren't, um, they just kind of come out of my head. I, I should, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm pulling this out to see if, uh, so another, just a nice <laughs> piece of box that had a, 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 you know, a handle hole in it, but nice capsule shape, but I decided against it. Um, yeah, so anyway, for some reason, I, I will tend to draw, like, if I'm not drawing in this sort of um, abstract uh, way, then I'll tend to either draw people um, that I would think of as being in somewhat of a comic drawing style, like they're, they're, they are lifelike, but they, um, I've written the word uh, number on, on the page. Um, <laughs> so the people are lifelike, but I don't know. I, I shouldn't talk about them too much without the visual reference. I'll, I'll, I'll show some of them someday or maybe do a drawing of, of them. But um, And then the other thing I, I tend to do if I'm not doing abstraction is landscape. And I actually think of some of these abstract drawings as landscapes or as representing... Um, land or place um without trying to actually look like um something i guess that's the weird thing about using a word like representational because uh, sometimes something represents without um without actually looking like something um i guess the, the other word would be like figurative but um so i've now i've written not a uh so this is uh not a number which um I don't know where that came from in, in this case, um, which is, you know, quite often the case, the, the words, the letters that, that go onto these drawings either just kind of pop into my head or they're from some other reference point that, um, that uh, doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't have meaning. There's another common form for me. Arrows are directional arrows and often um, curving arrows are, are common. That's another one, I think. I, I described that in um, the previous video, that um, this the letter forms A and B. Uh, over the last couple to few years, the, those have, not in every drawing, certainly, but they're a common thing. Um, and in the last uh, drawing video, I, I kind of talked about that a little bit. They're, in my head, they're, their meaning is connected to um, the association between two things, the choice between two things, the um, like finding a balance between two choices or, or um, objects or emotions maybe. Um, it's not super articulated, that's why I'm having <laughs> a uh, hard time maybe articulating it for real, but, um, yeah, that there, it's, it's weird when such a simple, um, thing, it, like the meaning kind of creeps up on me over time as I do these drawings. I think that's part of, and it's part of why I actually make the drawings is to, um, make marks and to discover for myself why I'm making those marks. Um, which I think uh, it makes sense to me in, in theory, but also sort of sounds maybe strange from, a, from the perspective of, um, you know, I, I think there's um, maybe an impression that, that 
in drawing or in painting or like that that all that all kind of marks are are intentional um and i guess that i don't know i guess they they still there is still intention even if the intention is not is without um conscious thought it just sort of you know what i'm doing now here with these uh, of I've mentioned I've got this this is an F pencil so fairly fairly hard thin line doesn't in, inscribe much on the page I, at this distance obviously you're not uh, kind of seeing much happening um, but it's just kind of reacting to the shapes and then reacting to the surfaces that are formed by the paint by the paper by paper that's been put on top of the existing paper um, and then just sort of putting a bit of lively line into it. Sometimes those lines are are kind of harsher and geometric. Sometimes there there's a lot of scribbling. What I did there was more sort of like um, just sort of kind of dancing around the page a little bit. Just they they to me they the pencil line just um, provides motion and depth i think i've in i think i've said that in, in each of the videos i've done that they they are it's the weird thing about um scribbling one scribbling is a is a good therapeutic thing just to sort of not guide your hand too much and to um and i'm doing so sort of the opposite right now I, i'm even though the, like i'm 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 using a ruler and i'm not being too finicky about this like I'm not measuring I'm actually just using the I'm eyeballing any measurement here but and I'm using the I'm just using the straight surface of the ruler you can tell if you're watching I'm not you know I'm not perfectly um uh balanced or aligned in in the lines I'm putting down here but but there is more um I'm meaning to make uh I'm meaning to make straight lines I'm meaning to uh, kind of inscribe a grid or, or, or columns or rows on, onto the page. And these pages already, like I say, it's a ledger. So there's already columns and rows that, that form every page. Um, which is, it, it's a, a, a huge reason why I chose to start drawing in this book, because there's, there's already structure there and structure that doesn't really say, draw on top of me it's, it's structure that's meant to contain and and so i'm i sort of i choose most of the time to occasionally i'll um well actually quite often i'll use those underlying lines to to decide on bits of balance like i'll line i'll align a bunch of things down one of the one of the column lines so these sort of red column lines that are going down um or I'll or I'll choose a spacing based on some of the the thinner lines that are in there. Um, anyway, so I'm I guess I'm talking about the comparison between the planned out kind of grid drawing I just did, um, and then even what I'm doing now using a, a circle template to to more specifically um, make a repeated shape. I'm not I'm not all all that careful about it so each circle kind of has its own qualities because I'm not both the tools I'm using and the kind of eyeballing of where I'm placing the template means that I'm not getting perfect placement or um, exactly uh, aligning things one to one but it, anyway it's still um, I'm still intending to be um, a bit more specific versus that pencil line just sort of dancing around on the page, like I say. Uh, I'm doing here, uh, you've seen it in, if you've watched the last couple videos before this, this is kind of a new pattern that's come in. These like semicircles uh, that are applied within, within a grid. Um, and in this case, I'm getting even more structured really than I've done before because I'm sort of 
having quantities of these of these semicircles. You can see I'm sort of stepping up. Uh, I've got like a, this uh, series of like a, almost a, a a a chart or a graph of of these like a, a horizontal kind of bar graph made up of of these semicircles within the grid. Um, I don't know. I think in a previous video, I, I, I described these coming out of uh, sort of thinking about scales or, or armor kind of thing that came out of those sorts of forms that kind of, um, they also kind of form like just scallop, um, which is, a, I've always thought is a, is a, a pleasing kind of <laughs> visual form. Uh, but, but I don't really know like yeah, I guess I don't know why I started doing these other than just I liked the look of them. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's... Well, I, I know for certain there are other visual reference points that these come from. Um, you can see in that, and I kind of made a choice that I darkened in some of the circles, but not all of them. Um, there, There's a... It points to, the, in some of these drawings, there's a bit of like a, it is kind of graph making or chart making or, um, but, but without there being any, there's no data <laughs> behind it, right? Uh, I'm, I'm wiping off the ruler with some baby wipes because the, the, the paint was actually still pretty wet when I was putting down those lines. So, um, that's also a very old ruler that I'm using too. I think that ruler is, it's probably from the. 50s or something. It's one of these uh, rulers that some company gave out as, as a, you know, you signed up for some account and you got a free ruler or something. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why that was. Maybe, maybe it was, uh, you know, maybe hardware store or something like that, um, giving out rulers. Sometimes the, it's weird. Sometimes what you would expect, like in those old freebie giveaways, they weren't always all that tied to the service. Like I, I somewhere uh, I have, I have a, a like a, a free comb that was like one of those plastic uh, hair combs that was given out from an insurance company. But it's sort of like I, you know, I don't know what the connection would be. It's like, oh, you signed up for an insurance policy. Here's your free comb. Um, not exactly a, a big incentive, but. Um, you know, the other common thing was often like a, a pencil with an ad on it kind of thing, which I, I love when I find those, uh, like an, an old pencil with an ad on it. Um, we actually have a, a little kind of acquired collection that I've added to a little bit of pencil stubs uh, that were in a jar. We got it at this uh, junk shop that we used to frequent in, in Toronto that I've mentioned, but... Um, Anyway, it had a few of those uh, good little pencils with a, a slogan or something on it. But yeah, I think I think the ruler is a Bible verse. Actually, it's like I think it's like do unto others. You know, something something. Um, can't don't know if you can read it from from here, but you know, fine message regardless. Um, Some more, some more letter making. I have, um, I talked in a previous video, I think the video where I was kind of doing the introduction to the ledger of the types of lettering that I do. Um, there's, there's more kind of, um, sometimes it's more graphic, like I'll actually use old letter set or I'll use a letter stencil or something like that. Um, most of the time though, it's this kind of um, slightly vertically stretched kind of block printing um, that's a little bit, um, it's a little bit clumsy, a little bit messy. That's kind of the, the type of lettering I choose. I think what am I I think I'm writing out a word to to make sure that I am going to spell it correctly. <laughs> sometimes I sometimes that's the the uh, 
the funny thing about writing words on, on artwork is uh, I, I suppose if I if I do spell things correctly, I should just go with it, uh, you know, or incorrectly, I should say, I should just go with it and not not worry about it. But occasionally, there's a word where I'm like, oh, am I gonna if I just write that stream of consciousness, will I write the right letters? Um, anyway, by the way, if you can't see, I the text at the bottom I wrote was force over time, uh, sort of, and I left a space between. Uh, over in time. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm debating whether um, I want to write a word up here, and now I'm now I'm doing it. There's it's the tricky thing of especially writing um, words in this quite dark black. Uh, this is still the stabilo that I'm that I'm using here, so it's it's quite intense, and it's like once it's there, I can actually wipe it off. It because it's water soluble, I can take it off. Um, but it means that um, you know if there was an area like the area I just wrote that, which is you know a white and that light Naples yellow, it if I wipe that away, it would kind of change that tone a little bit. So, um, anyway, yeah, it's, there, it's the tricky thing sometimes of if I think, oh, I just want to make another mark, another mark. If that mark is a word, um, it's like there's more at stake or something when I'm, when I'm thinking about putting a word down. Um, I know that some people actually have, uh, a bit of a bias against any artwork that has words in it. Um, maybe, maybe even some people thinking it's like a, a cop out or something like that. But I, I, I think I said I may have said a similar thing already in another video. But to me, it's yeah, words are just another form of mark making, and yes, they have, they have meanings. Um, they aren't just a bunch of lines, um, but they also are at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, so, so they are, they are drawing that has like this, this, uh, overlay of, of meaning, essentially words are like written words are, are strange that way. Um, even like if occasionally I've chosen to write in, um, write words in cursive, which cursive is a funny one because I'd basically, I'm still not that great at it. I had almost entirely forgotten how to form any cursive letters other than just a few of the lowercase ones that I probably had to do a lot of as at a certain point. You know, I was of a generation where we certainly learned and practiced cursive. Um, a lot of people are really into the fact that cursive is sort of being reintroduced in some schools. I'm... Uh, I'm here or there on, on that specifically. I do believe that kids should be, should have direct experience with, with writing words. Um, I just don't know if they necessarily need to learn cursive. It's, it's a debatable thing, but anyway, sometimes I will use cursive in, in drawings, um, mainly for the, um, there's the aesthetic difference, obviously. It's a, it's a, the kind of looping forms, the kind of softer forms versus the text I put down. And this sort of style is very, um, it's much more angular. It's much more, um, it's got a bit of hard, like roughness to it. It's got a bit of, uh, it feels a bit forceful, I suppose. Uh, whereas, uh, when you write something in cursive, it, it feels there's a, there's a, um, like I say, again, the kind of looping forms, the softness of the forms, it, it changes the, the way you would read that word. Um, you could almost think of like, I, I don't know if I do think of this, normally it just popped in my head, but like you, you might say a word in all, in all caps in, in a loud voice, but then you might almost like sing song the same word if it was written in all lower lowercase cursive all right so 
I, I decided I kind of reached a good point with this. I didn't want to disturb it too much more. So here's a, here's a closer look. And I quite like in this one that I've got, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm titling it, uh, that, uh, Nan with the, the lowercase a sort of a, um, I don't know if I like this title after, after kind of thinking about it, revisiting it, but it means not a number. It's like a computer error code, almost essentially where it's like you, you're meant to have provided a, a number and it hasn't come through. But anyway, that's this drawing. Uh, hope you enjoyed following along and uh, uh, I'll post a few more soon.